Thank you for listening to Gateway City Church Online today. We hope this message will be a blessing to you and draw you closer to God. Now let's go into the service for today's message. Dr. Susan Richards is our special guest today, a widely known Stanford medical doctor as well as an ordained minister. She's the author of a number of books on nutrition and healthy living. Her uh, Facebook page reaches over a million followers every day with uh, tips on nutrition and faith, and she'll tell you more about that. She's widely known. After many years of medical practice and teaching, as well as praying for the sick, God has given Dr. Richards a mission uh, to start the first medical school of healing. This would be a training program in the United States to combine medicine and faith together. This will be the first in the United States. She's seen God miraculously heal many critical patients. She conducts nights of healing, around the Bay Area, and we are very, very pleased that she has agreed to come, share her story, and tell us what God is doing through her ministry. We are so pleased that she's here. Would you please welcome Dr. Susan Richards. Susan, please come. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Did you want me to mention about a pastor? Yeah, that would be great. Susan has asked... Now, I don't know which pastor this is, but one of our pastors was telling her that he was that his knee was touched in the first service. Was that you, Albert? C- come here. Okay, I'll, I'll, you're not shy. What happened? Yeah. Um, well, about a month ago, I had just tweaked my knee um, doing something, and, and I, I just thought it was just old man's, you know, disease. And <laughs> it wouldn't heal for about four weeks, and it started to get better, uh, and then this week, it, it got worse, and uh, especially the last couple of days, I had excruciating, uh, burning pain um, right at, right on my knee, and, this, and yesterday was, was, was bad, and this morning, towards the end of the second service, um, I'm sorry, end of first service, we began to pray, and this room was filled with faith, and instantly, the pain was gone. <laughs> Uh, this was, this was a sharp, a sharp burning pain, and it was gone. And I said, I didn't want to stand and start running, but I, I said the test would be when I stand if if that the pressure would be on it. I was so uncomfortable in the first service, I could barely sit still, and um, and God healed me. I've never experienced a healing like this. Well, you know. Uh, we're thanking God here, and uh, you said you thought it was an old man thing. Yeah. The reason that I did not know which of my pastors she was talking about was because she said, I, I, I talked to him, and he has two beautiful daughters. And I think that Susan thought that Jenny was one of your daughters. Did you have two girls together? Oh, two girls. Okay, they weren't daughters. I thought maybe she had mistaken uh, Jenny as one of your daughters. I was going to say, you really are getting old, dude. (laughs) Anyway, please welcome Dr. Richards, and uh, thank you for coming. Hi. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I'm I'm just absolutely so happy to be able to um, share with all of you today and to and to be with you in this wonderful church. I'm I'm just so so happy. So thank you, Pastor David, for the great introduction that you gave me. And I would like to share a little bit more with all of you about my background, because I wear an unusual set of hats as a medical doctor and an ordained minister. It's not, it's not the most common thing. And um, so I would like to give you a little bit of background on how this occurred. Um, I've always had a heart for the Lord ever since I was a small child. Jesus started showing up in my life even as young as five or six years old. And it was a very special, very special kind of experience for me. He would show up and my heart would be touched. And I would go from being just a regular little kid who didn't, you know, just wanted to run around and have fun to all of a sudden being touched with compassion. And I remember even now what it felt like to be a small child and all of a sudden Jesus would touch me and I would look at other children with different eyes. 
it was like I was seeing them through the eyes of the Lord. And all of a sudden, I would, I would kind of pick out children who were having problems or, or who were being um, you know, ignored by other kids or rejected. And, and my heart would go out to them, and I would want to be with them and sit with them. And then I would just go back to being a normal kid <laughs> who, you know, who, who didn't feel these things. But, but Jesus just kept showing up in my life and he was the main driver that I went into medical school for and decided to become a, a doctor for. I, I went into medicine purely to love and serve other people. And I actually shifted from, from being a liberal arts major to being a science major so that I could do this and, and ended up having to take calculus and analytic geometry and organic chemistry and pre-med physics and all those classes so that I could serve the Lord. So I, I was accepted into medical school, and, and my great joy during all those years of medical training that it are so rigorous and you're being, you know, during your clinical years, you're being pulled out of bed at 3 in the morning to do an EKG on a patient, and you're half asleep, and you're working, you know, 100-hour weeks, 110-hour weeks, and... I remember during one rotation I did, I almost didn't sleep for two whole weeks. I would just take cat naps. So during all that time, what was really special for me was that personal experience with the patients. And I would literally, outside of my, my school hours, would adopt patients in the hospital, especially those patients that were alone and didn't have family around and were were very lonely and, and needed, needed visits, needed someone to talk to. So I would sit by their bedside and just get to know them. I would let them talk and share with me. And, and it was just a real gift. I remember the first man that I ever did this with as a, as a freshman medical student was a man who was terminally ill with uh, malignant melanoma. He was on his way out. He was not anybody that was going to be healed, but I just loved him and spent time with him, and it was really a touching experience for me to do this. So when I went into practice, I still had that same heart for people. As Pastor David mentioned, I've been in, in clinical practice. I've also been a clinical faculty member at Stanford University School of Medicine, and so I was very much into the, you know, the teaching part and the, um, you know, conventional medicine. But, um, but there was a lot more for me to the field. And just to show you how God has worked in my life, I'm currently now a minister at Stanford. I've moved from the um, medical side over to ministry. It's actually a lot more fun. <laughs> I, it's, I, I have a lot more enjoyment with it. I'm no longer with the medical center, but I'm actually ministering to undergraduate and graduate students. So the medical students and the residents that are now econ PhDs and computer science, um, you know, master's degrees and undergraduates. And it's really fun because it's a, it's a miracle and love ministry on the campus. And it's really fun to do. But during that time, God was, without my really realizing it, already leading me into ministry because I was the doctor that you would go to if you wanted a hug. I was very strong technically and saw great results with my patients, but I really wanted to know the people that I was ministering to. Um, I, I don't think hardly anybody ever turned down hugs. Everybody really enjoyed it. And I had very wonderful relationships with the people that I was seeing in my practice. Then six years ago, the Lord led me into something that was so life-changing for me that, that I've never really looked back in terms of what my early years in the medical field were. He told me at that time and guided me into ministry and said, I want you to go deeper in your walk with me and to become a minister. So I became ordained, and at that point, everything in my life shifted. I had an amazing experience 
which is that the Lord began to open up hospitals all over the Bay Area for me to minister in. So I was at Stanford Hospital, um, Lucille Packard Children's Hospital, the Veterans Hospitals, both in Palo Alto and San Francisco, Kaiser Hospitals, um, the count, county hospitals, um, private hospitals, doing ministry. And you have to be in my field to know how unusual this is. How many of you have been prayed over by your physician? <laughs> like a couple of hands, but I'm not seeing a lot of hands going up. <laughs> and that's pretty much the normal experience if you go to a doctor. Mostly your doctors will order lab tests and, and um, take a medical history and prescribe drugs, maybe unfortunately prescribe surgery at times, surgical procedures. But you don't get prayed over. And in fact, during my medical training, I never heard the word prayer or love or God or healing or miracles during any part of my training. It just doesn't exist in the medical field. And so it was, it was quite an amazing experience because even those few doctors that pray tend to pray for a very small number of patients. They're praying for the patients in their practice and, and even in the hospital setting they're only praying for those patients who are under their care. So it's always a small number. And they're usually praying for comfort and blessing. And it's a wonderful thing. Occasionally there are doctors who pray for miracles, but they're not so predominant. What happened with me was an absolute miracle of the Lord because he opened up the opportunity to pray for thousands and thousands of patients, which is what happened. I, I began to pray at all these hospitals, and I was praying for seriously ill patients who were coming to me from ministers who were recommending patients to me, from families, from within the hospital itself. I remember at Stanford Hospital, a nurse handed me a little alcohol swab that said a patient's name and asked me to pray for a patient because they had no family. Can I have a little bit of water? <coughs> Thank you so much. I've been talking all week at conferences, and uh, healing clinics, and I realized I should have had some water in between the first and second service, but I was so busy visiting and, and didn't drink. So excuse me, I'm going to take one more sip. Really good for your health. I recommend it. I strongly recommend it. So in the hospitals, I was, I was in the general wards, but I was often in, in the ICUs where patients are literally hanging on by a thread to life, or I was in burn units or critical care units, medical ICUs, and the people were really sick. I would go into some units where everybody was on a breathing machine. Everybody's hooked up to monitors getting blood draws all the time. And what was so incredible was that in the hospital settings, I was seeing the crippled walk and the blind see and the deaf hear. I was seeing patients who should have passed on whose physicians expected them to, or who should have been on dialysis for the rest of their life, be freed from all of these things and be completely healed. It was nothing I could explain based on my medical training or what I had seen before, even with having great results with patients. Nothing had prepared me for what I was seeing. I saw so many quadriplegics walk that if I added them all up, it'd be like an army. And all of you know about Christopher Reeves, I'm sure, because he is the most famous quadriplegic uh, that we've had in this country. And the amazing thing about Christopher Reeves was he was so typical of what we often see in my field, which is that incredible resources were, were, were thrown at him. Blessings, financial blessings to get the best care possible. Yet he never walked again. He was always on assisted breathing. He had a little bit of minimal function return over, what was it, 10 years? But he... When he passed on, he had never been healed. 
And I was praying for patients and seeing them be healed in the hospital where they'd be walking while they were still in the hospital as a quadriplegic with no function below the shoulders. These were people, as you all know, who have no feeling and no motor function below the shoulders or upper body. And occasionally you'll see low quadriplegic injuries where there's some use of the arm, but it's, it's not normal. It's not where you're, you know, doing all the things you're used to doing with your hands, with your arm's strength. It, it's very minimal. So just to give you an example of the kinds of things I was seeing, I do want to share with you a few cases. And, and I want to make the point that God is so loving. I learned about how kind and gentle he was in this setting because there was never anything hard or harsh about his healing. He is pure love and pure goodness. The enemy is the harsh one. The enemy is the hard one. If you experience anything harsh or hard in your body or a harsh voice in your head, that is never from God. God is loving and he is kind. And his healings are loving and kind. So I prayed over anybody and everybody that wanted prayer. And they were not always Christian. I prayed over people who were Christian I prayed over non-believers. I prayed over people who were from different traditions, Buddhists, Hindu, Muslims, Jewish. I prayed over everyone, and I saw them all healed. And I saw many of them come to God because they were so touched by his love. I will give you one example of a patient that I prayed over who was a robber. And he was in the middle of committing a robbery when he fell. And he broke, he broke his cervical spine and was paralyzed. And he shared with me that he knew he was in real trouble because he could not feel his body when he was in the ambulance. He said, I was in deep trouble. <laughs> and so here he is, a robber who's not a believer. And, and he also, as he shared with me, had terrible family relationships. He had been what he called, you know, a bad boy, a bad guy from the age of 11. And he had not talked to his father since he was 11 years old. And he was 32 when he, we had this injury. The amazing thing was I prayed for him. And he was healed so quickly that he was in the hospital doing push-ups. More push-ups than I could do. I was like, I was like astonished. I was like, look at all this push-ups. He was showing me all kinds of exercises in bed, outside of bed. And he shared with me something even more touching, which is God not only healed his physical body, but he healed his heart. And when he was in the hospital, he, he reconciled with his father, who now lived in Texas, who he had not spoken to in about 20 years. And he now was reconciled with his family he was healed in his body, healed in his mind. And I loved that every time I prayed for him, he came to God and he would want to pray back for me. I could not pray for him without him saying, I want to pray for you. And he was discharged from the hospital very quickly, completely healed. It was just amazing. And I saw <laughs> patient after patient like him. Um, Another patient that I worked with was a teenager who was in a mountain biking accident and had fractured his cervical spine, and he was completely paralyzed. Here he is, a teenager, just out biking, having fun. He comes into the hospital paralyzed, quadriplegic, bruised, bloodied, injured, a mess, and couldn't use his arms, couldn't use his hands, couldn't do anything. And God healed him, too. I have pictures of him that are so special where he's standing up the first time he's walking, and the family was just beyond excited. It was so, it was so wonderful to see. Um, he, like many patients, was able to walk out of the hospital. And I received um, pictures of him from his mom 
back around September of last year showing pictures of him mountain climbing. So I have pictures of him with his arms spread out in victory, pictures of him with his mom, and so he's a mountain climbing quad. So I see walking quads, bowling quads, swimming quads, mountain climbing quads, and that's the incredible miracle of the Lord. I've seen uh, patients who were flatlined who are going to actually have life support removed. I remember one patient that I prayed over who had had a hemorrhagic stroke and collapsed in his house and was found um, completely gone. He was in a coma and was taken to the hospital and nothing helped. He was, f he was flatlined on his brain. He had no function and he was going to be removed from life support. I found out about him from a friend who, who basically was, you know, given next of kin privileges because this fellow was not from our country. He's a computer, um, you know, technical person in Silicon Valley, but didn't have any family here. So I happened to know his friend who called me in to pray for him. And when I prayed for him, um, I prayed for him twice. The first time I prayed for him, um, nothing much happened right then and right there. But then soon thereafter, I got a very excited call from his friend who told me that his eyes had popped open. So I raced back to the hospital, and there is the patient lying there, ready to be taken off life support and hooked up to all the you know, the gadgetry that we do. And he had tape over his mouth and tape everywhere, and it was pretty awful. And I walk in the room, and he waves at me. <laughs> he gives me a high five <laughs> from his bed. <laughs> this man who's going to be taken off life support. And as I'm standing in his room, the neurosurgeon comes in who was caring for him. And I'm standing on one side of this man's bed in the ICU, and the neurosurgeon is standing on the other. And he says to this man, you have had a miracle. He said, I can't explain it. I, can't, I don't understand it. But whatever this miracle is all about, just keep having it. <laughs> and then the neurosurgeon left the room. And long story short, this man had a complete recovery. Um, I kept visiting him and praying with him. It was really touching because as he recovered, I asked him if he knew I had prayed for him when he was in a coma and he had no brain activity. And he said yes, and he was crying. He had tears coming down his face. And he ended up completely recovered with, with nothing. It's his life, as if this had never happened. And that's how the Lord works. He, he, when the Lord comes in and heals... He does not heal the way that we heal as doctors. Or we manage, what we can do as doctors is we manage illness. We do not cure you. And often we do sort of a 50-50 job no matter how well trained we are, no matter how dedicated we are, we're limited by the therapies. Many times people have side effects to the drugs and you trade one symptom for another. I see that all the time. I see that with people who are on pain meds. I see it so often with many different types of medication. And often what we give isn't, you know, perfect in terms of the outcomes that we would like. There are some drugs like antihypertensive medication that are completely life-saving. They do protect people from strokes, from, you know, congestive heart failure. They're it's crucial, but often the, the outcomes are less than we would like, and I'm sure many of you in this room have experienced that within yourself because it's just common within the field. Only God can heal, only the hand of the Lord, and when he heals, he can heal like this. It's incredible. Because I come from the medical field rather than starting out in ministry, I had no innate prejudice against you know, you only should have one prayer and you're healed. I don't come from that mindset. I'm very patient. It doesn't matter to me if you're, if you're a quadriplegic or you're 
you've had a heart attack and you're you know coming off surgery or whatever and and you need one prayer or you need five prayers it doesn't matter what i love to see is the hand of the lord healing people and he loves to heal the whole person so when i pray into people i'm not just praying into your back or your heart or your lungs i pray into all of you and i pray as a medical doctor with all my knowledge praying into all of the chemical reactions within the body i pray into your physiology so i i pray with that kind of knowledge i go into a very detailed level of prayer if i'm doing you know a prayer healing ministry session but i also pray for your heart i pray for your soul i pray for your mind because the mind and body are one and often we just pray for a piece of you the doctor is treating a piece of you and even in ministry often we just pray for the part of the person you know that comes up to for prayer but we don't know why you have a bad back that's probably something of my medical background coming up in in the way i do prayer ministry because i want to know do you have a bad back because you had an injury do you have a bad back because you've you know overused it and have had you know kind of bad orthopedics in the way you sit in front of the computer 12 hours a day do you have a bad back because the husband you're a husband or wife and you have a fight with your spouse and every time you have a fight your back goes out or you can't stand your job and you go to work and oh my back is killing me every time i go to work so i want to know why because then i pray over the why because you are a whole person and i have a quick um couple of slides i wanted to show you and and tell you the story really briefly um, this is a little boy who was born brain impaired. And I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to just um, spend a few minutes on him. Oh, go back to the first slide. Um, so he was born brain impaired, and as you can see, he's, he's completely within himself. He's a little boy who's 20 months old, and he was given no, really no hope by the pediatric neurologist, the physical therapist, the medical people that he was working with said that he just is very unlikely to go through normal developmental stages. He had multiple neurological um, imbalances. And as you can see, um, he's being stabilized. His mom's hands are around him because he could not sit up. He could not, he didn't really react with the environment. He didn't know he had mom and dad. Um, he wasn't like a normal kid exploring and playing with things. So the mom found me and asked me if I would pray for their child. She said, he's hopeless. I know he's considered hopeless by the doctors, but she said, will you pray for him? So I prayed for him, and God started healing him in the middle of the prayer. This was a little boy who um, could not sit up, as I mentioned, by himself. The mom tried to stand him up to show me he collapsed. He was drooling continuously. Um, he's screaming and yelling and tantruming, but he wasn't yelling at his mom or the environment. He's just yelling. And so as I prayed for him, I knew that God was healing him because he stopped all of these symptoms. The yelling stopped. He stopped drooling. He calmed down, and his muscle tone began to shift. And here he is, the second slide at the end of the prayer session. Now that's a miracle. <laughs> that's a miracle of the Lord. <laughs> and his mom and dad are computer software engineers. And they, his mom is a new Christian. She actually is from a Hindu background. And she tried all of the Hindu priests and nothing. And, and then she, she was really touched several months before I met her by Jesus. She became a Christian and brought her child to me and it was just beautiful to see what god did the little the little boy the first week started playing with the parents computers because they're both computer software engineers in silicon valley he started playing with their iphone um you we can go on to the other pictures he started this is right at that first session he started playing with things in the environment you can see he's starting to explore um, he's pushing furniture around he's sitting up He's standing, he's walking, 
Um, he's looking at a picture books, little tiny kid. And um, there's the mom in back, very happy. And here he is, it's such a cute picture, he's in a little car. And the mom has brought him to many conferences that I've had in the last month or two. She always brings him to the conference and holds him up and shows him off to hundreds of people that this is what God does. I do want to share with you that God's continued to work with the medical ministry that I do. Pastor David mentioned that we have a Facebook page that's huge. I just I want to say that we started this a few years ago, and all glory to God, all praise to God, because his hand has continued to be on everything that I do with this ministry in every possible way. He took a Facebook page with 10 people that was the biggest loser of a page you could ever imagine. <laughs> Nobody was interested in the page. Nobody wanted to like it. It didn't matter what I would do. It didn't matter if I would give you the best, um, the best homemade smoothie recipe in the whole world. <laughs> it didn't matter what tip I gave. Nobody really cared about the page for the first month or two. And then I started posting inspirational things that were spiritual, prayer requests, things of the Lord. And he came in and blessed the page, and we started having hundreds of thousands of people showing up with every post I was doing. The, the posts were shared and shared and shared over and over again. Um, we have a million, 150,000 followers on Facebook um, today. We, we have as many as 5 million people at times coming on the page I understand from people who know a lot about Facebook, there's, there's only 500 or 1,000 pages in the whole world that have this number out of the more than billion people who have Facebook. So that was completely the Lord. I get, 100, I get a million 500,000 requests for prayer healing each year from this. And the Lord... Um, I consider this sort of a setup from God. <laughs> he actually sort of shared with me that it was kind of a setup because what he really wants to do is take this healing, this whole person healing, where people are brought not only healing of their physical body, but healing of their joy, healing of their life, healing of their careers, financial healing, healing wherever they need healing, into the population as a whole throughout the country. But starting here in Silicon Valley, there is so much going on here in this supposedly hopeless area where nobody goes to church and nobody believes in God. There's a complete um, revival that's under the surface that's going to be breaking loose soon. That's what God is doing with our area. And it's, it's really special. And how he guided me in the last year was to start a school, as Pastor David kindly mentioned, where we would be uh, training and equipping people, not only spiritually, but medically. We have a whole faculty of medical doctors. We have several oncologists, for example, from Stanford, from the medical school. We have an endocrinologist from Idaho, from Boise, who's flying in to teach that subject. We have amazing doctors and nurses who are here to teach people about their physical body. If they're interested in doing ministry, it's the only field that you don't have to know about what you're doing in terms of praying over. If you're a computer person, you need to know about computers. But in the ministry field, traditionally, there hasn't been a medical training component. And I do want to share with you that if you're interested in prayer healing ministry, or if you just are ill and you want to be healed and it's been stubborn and nagging, you, I invite you to look at our school. You may want to look at some of the healing classes because I, th I really know very much from the Lord that you will be blessed. You will be immersed in an environment. Whether you do it through video or live stream or come to the classes, we're literally just launching, even though we've been doing healing clinics and conferences, we're just launching the school this next week. And it's completely flexible. You can be ordained in ministry and, and go for certification, or you can just take a class or two.
but it will be a blessing to everyone who who takes it because we have um, prayer healing ministry of God's supernatural miracles, inner healing classes, and then the medical for healer classes. So um, the uh, website is medschoolhealing.com. If any of you are interested, you can just put it in your your phone. And also, we, we used up all the flyers that I brought, I guess, at the first service, but um, there may be some that we did in black and white through the kindly through through Pastor David, through the church. So I don't know if there's any flyers left out there or not. Everything just got kind of <laughs> taken. But if, if there aren't and you're interested, again, just go to medschoolhealing.com. And then we have conferences. I had flyers for conferences. I don't know if any of them are left. But we have a conference in Redwood City on April 30th and then a healing clinic on May 5th, the first Thursday of every month. We pray for the sick. We have doctors and nurses and prayer intercessors. Did I say Monday? The first Thursday. First Thursday is the healing clinic. Now, I do want to end with a prayer for all of you, if, if that's something that, that I would love to do. And usually it's a little different than when I do a, um, an individual prayer and I'm praying in as a medical doctor and a minister because I'm able to go through each person's very specific chemical and physiological imbalances. I can speak to your medical symptoms. I can speak to that aspect in great detail, which I really like to do. But because it's a corporate prayer, I don't have the ability. There are as many chemical differences between each one of you as there are people sitting in this room. So each person has kind of a different set of imbalances. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on that as much as I can a little bit in doing a corporate prayer. But, um, but I would really like to, to do that with all of you and just just bring the presence of the Lord in prayer with, with this gathering with all of us today. So let's just all sit back in our chairs and just get into a, a place of God's goodness and his love, how much he loves you. And however you were when you came today to the to this sanctuary we had the testimony from the wonderful pastor with the knee pain he came in here with his knee excruciatingly painful and during this time of prayer that we had right now the pain lifted so many of you are probably coming in the same way where you have something that's been on your mind, whether it's been pain or a health issue, a tumor that you're dealing with, a cancer or heart disease, um, an autoimmune condition, an inflammatory condition, a traumatic injury, um, digestive organs that aren't working the way they should and you're battling indigestion, whatever it was you came in with today, or, or mood issues, so many people struggle with depression, or grief, or sadness, or anxiety, or worry, or panic. What, whatever it is that you came in with, or worrying about things in your life, let's just let all of that fade. Let's put all of it aside, because there isn't anything that the Lord can't heal. He is so loving and so kind. And dear God and dear Jesus, I just thank you for your presence among us today. I thank you for your love, your mercy, your goodness. I thank you for your blessing. I know that every single one of us is your precious child and that you love each and every one of us the same. You favor no one. We're all important to you. We're all precious. And any cares or worries, whether they be physical, emotional, or lifestyle, they're not from you, Lord. They're all from the enemy. And I just crush that in the name of Jesus. 
I crush the enemy and I just command that the enemy cannot be harassing each and every one of you that has been experiencing that in your lives. And we just chase the enemy out of this beautiful sanctuary and we command that only the Spirit of the Lord can be with us. And Lord, I, I hand all of this over to you that is not of you. I just hand every ill will and, and ill action of the enemy to you because the enemy has no authority. The enemy has no power. That is the lie, and we must not listen to the lies. We know that Jesus died on the cross so that we might be reborn in you and uplifted in the Lord and made whole again. So I just want to pray to you, God, that your love and your light and your healing just come upon all of us here, Lord, because where the love of God is, there can be no illness. There can be no suffering. There can be no trauma. So I pray, Lord, that your love be in all of us and just flow through each and every one of us. And I ask for a special healing, Lord, of the brain and the mind and the nervous system of everyone sitting here, because that is the master regulator of every part of our body. And it usually does not get prayed over unless you have a brain tumor or you have Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's. But that precious part of us that is so brilliant and so feeling and, and so has so much capacity is usually ignored, yet it regulates everything. And I want to pray for everyone here, Lord, that the, what we call in the medical field the tripartite brain, the forebrain, the cerebral cortex, the frontal lobe, the midbrain, the hindbrain is completely healed in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I know that the brain can go off so many different ways, not just with illness that is in the brain itself or neurologic, but just in its ability to regulate all of our functions, our endocrine function, our hormones, our mood, um, our cardiovascular function, our immunity, our pain level. All of that's regulated through the brain. So I ask, Lord, that the chemicals within the brain of each and every person here are brought into perfect balance because everything in the end is about balance. For example, if you are struggling with depression or low energy, fatigue, grief, sadness, there are many things that can occur when, when the inhibitory neurotransmitter pathways of the brain are off. And I want to pray that into balance, particularly in balance with what we call the excitatory pathways, that when they're in perfect balance, give us joy and, and zest for life and energy. But when they're off, we're being pushed toward panic and anxiety and worry and and hyperactivity and hypermetabolism. And I want to bring these all into balance in each and every person. So if any of these things are happening within your brain and your body, that the Lord can heal you. He knows what each of you needs. Many of you are probably suffering from pain because pain is also regulated through the brain. It's regulated through a part of the brain called the amygdala and also through the RAIC center in the cerebral cortex. The amygdala is, on the, is in the temporal lobe. And I pray that those parts of your brain be healed, and particularly with a chemical called GABA, which when you have GABA in the right amounts, and, and the GABA is in your body functioning the way it should, pain is dramatically reduced. It doesn't matter if it's shoulder pain or knee pain or hip pain or elbow pain or, or 
headaches or many different kinds of pain. They're all regulated through this path, these pathways. And I want to pray that also in the name of Jesus. I want to pray, Lord, that the nervous system and the brain is working perfectly through each and every person's body and that your love and your light is moving through every single organ system of each person here. Whether they need healing in their heart or their lungs or healing in their joints or their skin. I've seen the Lord do miracles of healing of dermatitis and skin conditions, whether they're battling tumors. Whatever it is, Lord, I just pray that your hand be upon them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, everything healed in the name of Jesus. And I want to pray into their mind and their thoughts and their feelings because when these things are off, and we are stressed. They aggravate illness. They can even be triggers for illness. And it's crucial to pray into this. There's a part of our brain called the limbic center and it regulates emotions. Our soul, our soul accumulates emotions that shouldn't be there. So if any of you are struggling with depression or unworthiness, or hopelessness, or sadness, or low self-esteem, or anger, or rejection, or abandonment, or low self-worth, whatever it is, lack of faith, lack of trust, I want to pray that out in the name of Jesus. I pray that you be cleansed and purified because these are the lies of the enemy. They are not of you. They are not of the Lord. I pray that you be cleansed in your brain, in the limbic system, in your heart, your mind, and in your very soul. That you be washed clean and purified by anything that is frustrating and aggravating you. And that the Lord wash you clean from these things. And he, and he give you instead his love and fill you with love and peace and joy and happiness and bliss, even feelings of blissfulness, and safety and security in the Lord, and inner strength and courage and confidence, deep faith and trust in Him. Whatever it is that you need, I pray that He give that to you. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you because your love is so huge. You love everyone here, and you want to see each of us blessed and healed. And most of all, Lord, I thank you for your incredible love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That was so special. And would you please tell us the website one more time? Oh, thank you so much. It's, it's medschoolhealing.com. If you go to that website, you'll see all our conferences, our healing clinics, and our classes. Yeah. So bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Would you please tell Susan how much we appreciate her? Dr. Susan Richards. Thank you for coming. Let me give you a microphone, dear. If any of you are in a hug mood, and I have a few minutes at the end, I love to give hugs. <laughs> I've never gotten over that, so instead of hiding for 10 minutes, because we're going to go off together, if I have a few minutes and any of you would like that, I would love it. <laughs> Make my day. <laughs> All right, beautiful. We appreciate you so much and that beautiful spirit of love. And God is... I know God has touched you in, in a very special way. I just want to give, you know, a quick bit of advice. We're going to, we are, as I mentioned, going to receive an offering. So I hope you'll be generous and help Susan start this school because I think it's very important that right here in the Bay Area, we could have something like that. And how honored are we? I mean, how blessed are we to have her? And so we're going to be generous. But if you're seeking healing, please remember two things. Be persistent. You know, don't, uh, 
Jesus kept talking about when you, if you keep asking, you'll receive. If you keep knocking, the door is going to open. And, and I think so many people give up too quickly. So stay with it. If you're asking the Lord for a healing touch in your life. And I love, I love the way you, not only have you seen miracles, but you've seen God stage in miracles progressively into people's lives. So please don't quit on that. And then also don't just seek the healing, but seek the healer. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. He's, he's the God. There's a healing, but there's also the God of healing, which, you know, you open your heart to him. And we'll pray with you. We'll help you to know Christ. If you've never received Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's important that you would do that, not just to seek healing, which is available, but also the healer. He will also forgive you. He will, he will give you a brand new life. That's what we do. We pray with people. And so our healing teams are going to be here and our prayer counselors are going to be here at the end of the service. If you need someone to talk to, check in with, uh, or if you just want to come up and get a hug, you can do that now. There's about uh, 700 or 800 people here, so please uh, hug briefly and it, it, you might be tempted to tell your whole story, but that wouldn't be possible today. Just a quick hug, I think, would be the right answer. And, uh, and so, but there'll be plenty of people up here to pray with you if you have any concerns about especially if you need assurance of salvation. It'd be so important for us to have a minute with you to, to pray with you. In fact, let me just pray with you right now that, that you could just not only receive healing, but you would receive the healer. Would you all just say a prayer with me right now? Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I'm lost without you. My sins are overwhelming. My needs are overwhelming. Please save me. Forgive me and give me a new life. I believe that you are the Son of God, and I receive your love, and I thank you for it. In Christ's name, amen. Praise the Lord. Now, if you've never prayed that prayer before, we want to we wanna tell you how important that was. Gateway, can we tell everybody that was amazing? <laughs> you to pray that prayer? That's a big big deal if you prayed that prayer for the first time it's the beginning of a brand new life for you we're going to serve you and allow you to give and and so and i think we're going to have some beautiful music so don't go anywhere we'll just take another minute or two here in the service allow the holy spirit to keep touching you you can make your check to gateway or give however you like give it we, we want to bless dr susan and her ministry pastor nicole beautiful worship today let's sing come on you guys Nothing is impossible.
all stand, I want to just speak a blessing. If you haven't had a chance to give, just give to the ushers as they come out. I know we have a little congestion here on the hug line, and that's a good thing. I'm gonna, I think the world would be better if there was just more hugs, don't you? In fact, if you're with somebody you love, you ought to just reach over and hug them right now and thank, thank God for them. Now, please lift your hands so I can bless you. Please lift your hands. Father, I speak a mighty blessing of the power of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our God to rest upon every person in this room, that everyone that needs healing, everyone that needs forgiveness, everyone that needs a touch will receive it through the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, this week we will live big for you. Satan is under our feet and you have given us the victory. Let us walk in that reality today in Christ's name. Amen. You may be dismissed. And if you need prayer, our teams are here. And if you just don't have time for a hug, that's okay. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday at Gateway. Thank you for coming, everyone.